Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here at DFD Mastery. I'm excited to have you. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm excited to go through uh, this content with you today. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe um, so you can stay tuned to all of our further content. We upload every three every week. So I hope you enjoyed today's content. We're gonna go and look at a property that we just made $68,000 on the deal and still have an equity percentage to make even more money here in the next few months. So I hope you enjoy the content and I hope you learn a ton. My name is Zach Booth and I help people understand how to find discounted properties consistently to buy rentals, fix and flip opportunities, and wholesale. If you're trying to find more discounted properties, check out my free webinar. Go ahead and click on the link below. I'll see you there. I'm super excited to help you start finding massively discounted properties. So today we're going to go into this property. This property, as you can see here, uh, has lots of fire damage. Uh, we found this property through driving for dollars, of course, the best marketing strategy out there. Go to dfdmastery.com and learn how to find more off-market deals for yourself or your own investment business. But this burnt down house, it was an obvious one that we added to our driving for dollars list. It had boarded up windows, um, you know, the yard was dead by the time we found it. It was an obvious fire damage property. Uh, so going through the inside of this house, you can tell that they've gone through and actually painted um, all of like the, the charcoal, um, I don't know if that's the right word, all of the, uh, the burnt timbers and studs and the framing of this house. Uh, this house is going to need all new electrical, all new plumbing. Uh, we're going to need to, or the person that does the remodel needs to go have a um, structural engineer create plans um, and have permits with the city and make sure that they follow all of the you know, updates and things that the engineer is suggesting to make this house safe again. So this is a very extensive remodel. As you can see up in the attic area, you know, that got burnt really bad. That's where most of the fire was. Uh, the cool thing about this deal is someone's already gone in and completely demoed and gotten rid of all the garbage. All the other firehouses that I've dealt with, you know, we have to go, you know, the flipper, whoever takes over these properties in the end has to go in and do all of that work. So a lot of the work's already been, been done. So this house, the situation was the, the property owner had the house and um, got our, our postcard and decided to sell it. They didn't want to go through and deal with having the insurance companies go in and take all the time to remodel it. Um, uh, so they could either turn it back into a rental or sell it. They'd opted to just take all of the insurance money and pocket it and sell the property as is. So we were able to pick this house up for $65,000 and we sold it for 133,000 as is. So that is a $68,000 profit. The cool thing is the guy that we sold this property to, uh, well, I guess we didn't sell the property. We sold the purchase contract um, and he closed on the property. So, you know, we whole, did a traditional wholesale on this property. So there was zero risk for us. It didn't take us any of our own money to be able to do this beyond our marketing, right? And an average deal for me is about $3,800. So the profits in my own pocket are very large. I mean, crazy amounts of money, life-changing money for sure. And so this deal, we were able to uh, pass it on to our flipper and we also made an agreement with the flipper that once he went in and did all the work and remodeled it and sold it, uh, we would split the profits on the back end. So um, <clears throat> we're, we're hoping to make uh, over another $10,000 or more, maybe quite a bit more, I don't know, but regardless, we're doing very well already on this deal. Uh, one of the reasons I don't like flipping houses is there's always there's always an obstacle or a hurdle beyond just remodeling the house that occurs. At least that's been the case with me. So let me give you an example of just this property. So our flipper that picked this property up, um, while he was getting permits and engineer plans finished and, and all the things that he needed to start the, the construction, he decided to list the property for sale on the general multiple listing services and see if anyone else out there would pay more than what he paid for it and quickly just turn it for a profit. So he listed the property and got it under contract the first week to make a good, uh, I think it was like an additional 20 grand on top of what he bought it for. 
which would uh, put 10,000 in our pockets and 10 in his. Um, of course, he wanted to take that route. We were great, okay with that. And uh, uh, he was told that $10,000 were at the title company, uh, non-refundable earnest money from the new buyer, and uh, everything was looking good. At the closing table, when everyone was supposed to show up and sign, our new buyer didn't show up. He didn't uh, answer his calls. He tried to ghost us. So then we had to f basically threaten lawsuits and oh, I didn't have to do any of this, right? Because I wasn't on title. I just had a handshake agreement to get half of the equity in the end. Um, and so he had to, you know, threaten the guy. Um, find, you know, we came to find out that the $10,000 never got deposited, even though we were told that it had been deposited um, from the title company. So then we, we were worried that we were going to have to take it to litigation to get that $10,000 that was owed to us. Uh, since since then, the um, the new buyer has settled outside of court for half of that, and so there's always those struggles. And so think about the expense for the for the private money, the money that he's used to borrow um, to buy that property. It's been sitting there vacant as he's been trying to deal with this problem, um, and now he's going to start the remodel. So there's always always hiccups. You know, we just got done with another property. Uh, we put it under contract and we're just going to split the profits on the back end. We looked at this deal as, oh, this is a very simple, this is a carpet and paint, literally carpet and paint. Um, and we thought about just tackling it ourselves and our own team here. And I decided to just partner with the flipper because every time I've closed on a property and try and do any remodel whatsoever, there's always so much work. So we partnered on this deal and the previous tenants or druggies uh, broke into the house. We realized that there's meth contamination, so there's now meth uh, cleaning that needs to happen, which takes a couple weeks, which adds a few more thousand dollars uh, in you know, meth contamination and uh, uh, roughly a couple more thousand dollars in money costs. And so that's really eating into the profits. Uh, plus the people that broke into the house, um, they uh, turned on the bathtub, and so now it's flooded the bathtubs, caused sheetrock damage. Yes, the insurance com company should cover most of that stuff, but it's still time, um, which will cost more money to repair those things as well. So it's never just a simple, simple process, and uh, that's why I don't like to handle flips myself. So, you know, structuring it where you get your assignment for the contract up front and still have an equity percentage and partner with your flip flipper in the end will make it less risky for your flipper and also make you more money um, in the long term by partnering with your flipper. So hopefully you guys learned a ton um, from this deal and from, from these gold nuggets. Uh, one thing that I also wanted to share with you guys real quick while I have you about fire damage properties. So a lot of people, they look at a property that has fire damage, uh, especially wholesalers, people that are new to this business, and go, okay, what do I do with a house that has fire damage? Well, the, the biggest thing is do not overcomplicate it. Get it under contract for as low as you possibly can, right? That is first and foremost. The next thing is you need to make sure you have cash buyers that would buy uh, properties that need extensive remodels. I mean, full, full, like basically build the house out beyond the, the, the structural. Once you have that property under contract, there's more expense that comes along with wholesaling a firehouse. So you actually have to go pay the structural engineer and get engineering plans so your cash buyers can get an, a, a lot better idea of the extensive um, the extent of how much needs to be done structurally to the house and those blueprints will really help them bid that out. But once you've gone in and got pictures, video, and engineer plans, you can then send it out to your cash buyers and get, um, get an idea of what they're willing to pay for a house like that. So hopefully that helps you. So wholesaling a firehouse is not complicated. You just need to add the engineer plans into there. Hopefully all this content's helped you. Hope you enjoyed the content. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.